Maharaj, we will have Uh, so we'll have a class um, on, um, um, I'm not sure the subject you want to start with. I can um, bring the verse. Oops. Where did we leave off? Yesterday it was another yes. class. So on uh, Wednesday we left off somewhere. Yes, good manager. It's um, uh, 10th uh, canto, 9th chapter, 9th verse. Uh, Mataji, we posted in the group. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj is continuing with the uh, Damodar Leela and uh, we are going to uh, continue from the uh, 10th verse of 9th chapter. Okay. 10th okay. verse, 9th chapter. Okay. I'm just opening Guru Maharaj. Uh, uh, today is also appearance day of Radha Kun Guru Maharaj. So if you want to maybe uh, say something about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So a continuation with the Blilas of Sri Dambodar. Here on the ninth chapter of the tenth canto, verse number ten. Avachamano jani bayab shalat skranam bara kramta gati samadayam jivena vishramasita kesha bandana chuta prasuna no gati param shrita avachamanam jani ni britat chalaj. Translation while following Krishna, Mother Yasoda. Her thin waist overburdened by her heavy breasts naturally had to reduce her speed. Because of following Krishna very sweet, swiftly, her hair began loose and the flowers in her hair were falling after her. Yet she did not fail to capture her son Krishna. Purport. Yogis cannot capture Krishna by severe penances and austerities. But Mother Yasoda, despite all obstacles, was finally able to catch Krishna without difficulty. This is the difference between a yogi and a bhakta. Yogis cannot enter the effulgence of Krishna. Yasya Prabha Prabhado Jagananda Koti Koti Shri. Brahma Samhita 540. In that effulgence, there are millions of universes, but yogis and jnanis cannot enter that effulgence even after many, many years of austerity. Whereas bhaktas can capture Krishna simply by love and affection. This is the example shown here by Mother Yasoda. Krishna therefore confirms that if one wants to capture him, one must undertake devotional service. Bhaktiyamam mabhajananti yavam yascha smitatpataha tatomam tatpato gyadva vishate taranam tarum. Bhaktas enter even the planet of Krishna very easily. But the less intelligent yogis and jnanis by their meditation remain running after Krishna. Even if they enter Krishna's effulgence, they fall down. 
Om gyan timidam dasya gana jana salakaya chaksun militam yena tas my shri guru vena maha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swami tinamane namaste saraswati devhe gaudamani pracharine nivrsi sasunya vadi vasyat yade satarine Bancha kalpa deru vischa kripa sindhu pe vacha patita nam pavane bio vaishnave bio namaho namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda sri advaita gadadara sivasari gor bhakta vrinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare so it's an interesting comparison that's being explained here. Mother Yasoda, what is her concern? She wants to make sure her son doesn't perform any more mischief. She wants to go on about her duties in the house so she can take care of Krishna by doing the duties meant for his pleasure and for his need. So, She's chasing after Krishna, and Krishna's running. Here, of course, uh, she had says that there are different interpretations of this particular part of the pastime. Specifically, some say that Mother Yasoda, he was able to catch him. Others say that Krishna slowed down so his mother could catch him. And here we say here, she had to reduce her speed because of her bodily dimensions, as mentioned here. Uh, it was hard for her to continue to run. So, um, yeah. So what is the whole mood? The mood is that she has pure love for Krishna. When love is there, nothing else is needed because everything is included. Everything auspicious is included in it within love. The yogis, the jnanis, the tapasis, the sadhus, the various types of uh, personalities who perform austerities in order to capture Krishna cannot. Although they work very hard, and their efforts are sometimes practically the whole lifetime. And they give up a lot of things. Of course, they make elevation into the Brahminic uh, Brahmani fulgence, but they can't capture Krishna. Well, only by devotional service. Bhaktiamam, Mavajananti, Yasvan, Yaschakvitatpataha. Krishna says that. And many places throughout the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna illustrates this point. So we, it's clear that, yes, it's, it's by bhakti, by love, by devotion, which encapsulates service to Krishna in the, mean, in the way that is pleasing to Krishna, is the way to capture Krishna. Mm -hmm. Capturing Krishna is, sounds, sounds like a cliche, but it's not. It's much more than that. It's the most, it's the highest thing that one can do. And it's the high, and it's the most difficult achievement one can attain to. Capturing that person who is the supreme Lord of all, who is within everything, without everything, the source of everything, the enjoyer of everything, the controller of everything the all-powerful force in existence. But love does it. <laughs> How do we develop love for Krishna? We have to hear about Krishna. We have to hear regularly about Krishna, his activities, his names, his qualities, the different forms that Krishna may accept. Through this process of hearing, and when it's done, what it says with attention, 
and the word is rapt attention or abs absorption in hearing about Krishna, the soul awakens because the soul has natural attraction for Krishna. It's there, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Sadam Sadam Kabunoi, Shravanadi Siddhi Chitte Koriyami Udai. Nobody has to learn how to love Krishna, it's already there. What you have to do is uncover it. And this hearing process is a way to uncover it. Not only uncover it, but uh, also give a clear understanding of Krishna through the hearing process. Both that uncovering and the hearing or the, the narrations of Krishna's qualities and activities uh, brings about awareness of Krishna in an, attra an attractive way. Because Krishna is all attractive, <laughs> especially in this particular form as a baby. We can see how, especially those who, who have these motherly tendencies, either with mothers themselves or those who have those tendencies, are very much attracted to Krishna in this particular mood as a little child, naughty, uh, performing various types of activities, likes to play, likes to be independent, very sweet to look at. Everything that a mother would, what we say, dream about and having a child like that. <laughs> That's Krishna. So this is natural and it's very sweet. As the uh, song goes, and he, uh, and the Satyavad Muni, when he sings the Dhammarigarastika, he said, I'm not interested in liberation. I'm not interested in going to Vaikuntha. In fact, I don't want anything. <laughs> You can offer me anything and everything. I don't want any of it. All I want is to have this vision of you, Bala Gopala, in my mind. That's all. That's what I really only want. I want, to, I want to see this vision of you as Bala Gopala within my heart and within my mind. That's all I want. So that's high. <laughs> that's deep. But it also illustrates the all-attractive nature of Krishna. Now, how he can capture someone's love and affection simply by those who make an endeavor to be captured by him. So, she captured him. She had pure love. And of course, Krishna also decided to become bound up just to show some compassion to his mother. But we learn from this pastime, and we also see in children in general, they don't like getting tied up. <laughs> children never like to get tied up. And Krishna's no exception. <laughs> he doesn't like it. But her love is so strong, it can't be resisted. That's the nature of love. When it's given in such a direct and in intense way, it's irresistible. It cannot be, it can't be sidestepped. It cannot be rejected. It cannot be fully experienced either. So that's what the devotees have for Krishna. They, and here this verse really is, is so nice because it simply illustrates this lady, Mother well, so of course, what's her qualification? She just has love for Krishna, that's all. She doesn't have any, she doesn't perform great austerities and penances. She doesn't follow a lot of rules and regulations. She simply has natural love for Krishna. Okay, let's go on to the next verse. Kritangasam tam parurudatam aksini shantam agyamna sini swatamina uviksamanam baya viva lekshanam aste grihidva 
Pisayat Yavagurat. When caught by Mother Yasoda, Krishna became more and more afraid and admitted of being and admitted of, to being an offender. She looked upon him, she saw that he was crying. His tears mixing with the black ointment around his eyes, and he rubbed his eyes with his hands. He smeared the ointment all over his face. Mother Yasoda, catching her beautiful son by the hand, mildly began to chastise him. From these dealings between Mother Yasoda and Krishna, we can understand the exalted position of a pure devotee and loving service to the Lord. A very powerful statement. From these dealings between Mother Yasoda and Krishna, we can understand the exalted position of a pure devotee in relationship to loving service to the Lord. Yogis, karmis, and Vedantists cannot even approach Krishna. They must remain very far away from him and try to enter his bodily effulgence. Although this also, they are unable to do so. Great demigods like Brahma, Shiva, always worship the Lord in meditation and by service. Even the most powerful Yamaraj fears Krishna. Therefore, as we find in the history of Ajamya, Yamaraj instructed as follows, not even to approach the devotees, but to speak of capturing them. In other words, Yamaraj also fears Krishna and Krishna's devotees. Yet this, Krishna becomes so dependent on his mother hmm, that when she simply showed Krishna the stick in her hand, Krishna admitted to being an offender and began to cry, just like an ordinary child. Mother Yasoda, of course, did not want to chastise her beloved child very much. And therefore, she immediately threw her stick away and simply rebuked Krishna, saying, Now I shall bind you so that you cannot commit any further offensive activities. For the time being, now, nor for the time being, can you play with your playmates. This, this shows the position of the pure devotee. In contrast with others, like jnanis, yogis, and the followers of the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies in regarding the transcendental nature of the absolute truth. So Mother Yasoda is playing the role of a restricted mother in this one. Uh, she's caught him, and he's crying. Such about Muni describes this particular scene as the mascaras smeared all over his face. He's rubbing his eyes. Tears are coming. And uh, the, the black ointment on his face is making his face look even more beautiful. Because we understand that Krishna, that everything about Krishna is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now she's caught him. And she begins to mildly, it's interesting the word mildly is used, chastise him. She doesn't want him to become more unhappy. She can see he's already crying and she doesn't want to make it worse by chastising him. This is a loving mother. She's very sensitive, but at the same time, she does her duty very nicely. Uh, the Acharyas, especially Satyavat Muni, in describing this, this particular Dalila, he describes how beautiful Krishna looks with his black mascara smeared all over his face. And he's shedding tears, he's rubbing his eyes. It's a beautiful scene. And here, Prabhupada wants to make a nice point. He says, even Yamaraj, Lord Brahma, Shiva, even they worship the Lord by 
devotional service, these powerful demigods, they worship a little bit, they worship out of awe and reverence, not so much out of love. They're worshiping a little bit out of fear because they have to they have to report to Krishna about the services that they're doing for Krishna. So they always want to re make a nice report. Let's see, what else can we hear? I hope the devotees every night are offering their prayers by singing the Dhammadarastika because of all of these things that we find in this particular chapter are also condensed within these eight beautiful prayers. Um, if you go deeper, you'll find that there are so many details to these prayers that open up the nature of the absolute truth in relationship to everything else. He's the power of all powers. You see, you see uh, in the readings of the prayers, how Satyavrat Muni, uh, he's glorifying the Lord as the supreme power of all existence, but at the same time, he glorifies his sweetness as Krishna and Vrindavan. He's doing both sometimes in the same verse. Okay. So, um, this is a nice meditation. Just focus your consciousness on seeing Mother Yasoda chasing after Krishna, and Krishna is running this way and that way. She's carrying a stick now. She feels, oh, no, no stick. He's becoming too fearful. I should get rid of the stick. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, please unmute yourself and ask. Shri Mataji, have your hands up and ask. Thank you. Dear Guru Maharaj, <clears throat> Hare Krishna, happy Kartik to you, Guru Maharaj. Please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, regarding this particular verse, yes, it's a very beautiful pastime and we are all listening to you, you know, relating it. But at the same time, I have this question about the yogis, the jnanis, uh, and the karmis. I want to know what, she, what is the destination of uh, these yogis? Because it says yogis cannot enter even the effulgence of Krishna. So that means only the jnanis uh, enter the effulgence of Krishna. Uh... Does it make a distinction between yogis and jnanis? Well, in the second line, it says here, yogis cannot enter even the effulgence of Krishna. In that effulgence, there are millions of universes, but yogis and jnanis cannot enter that effulgence even after many, many years of austerities. So it says both yogis and jnanis, but we have heard repeatedly that all that the jnanis can do is enter the Brahman effulgence because they're simply meditating on the impersonal feature of the Lord. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the general principle. Yeah, it's not an absolute principle, but that's true. Yeah, the jnanis and yogis, they approach the absolute truth from an impersonal point of view in order to get relief from the, the effects of the material energy. And by performing austerities and penances, and chanting mantras, uh, chanting verses from the from the uh, shastras, 
um, denying themselves various types of sense enjoyment. Uh, they're very austere. But you see the ganis and yogis, they, they don't look very happy. They're not happy. <laughs> Because happiness comes with uh, service. They're, they're, not, they're not serving. All they do is performing some kind of bodily austerity in order to gain some kind of material relief. That's all. And they get that. I'm, I'm a little, uh, you know, surprised at this statement because I've heard repeatedly that uh, the destination of the jnanis is to enter the Brahman effulgence and because there is no relationship, they fall down. So does it mean that not all of them can enter the Brahman effulgence, only some of them can? Yeah. Oh, yeah okay. there's, there's different kind of yogis and there's different kind of jnanis too. There's varieties. You had the jnanis, for example, with the four Kumara, they were jnanis. But they gave up their gyan when they actually came in contact with the lotus feet of the Lord, mixed with the sand of what and Tulsi leaves. So they were not they were not envious. But many of the gyanis are envious because they want the position of, of the Lord through through austerities and penances. Mm -hmm. And the yogis are meditating on the Paramatma feature of the Lord and performing austerities and penances. But for them also, the destination is the Brahman effulgence? Mm, well, they get realization of that, 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 that the Lord is situated in the hearts of all living entities. There's Brahman realization, Paramatma realization, and Bhagavan realization. Okay. okay. Sarva Guya something it's called sarva guya tamam or something it's all hidden the lord is hidden in the hearts of all living entities that's a realization it's mentioned in the bhagavad gita vinaya vidya vinaya sampane brahmani gavi hastani suni chaiva supake cha pandita samadarshana the lord and sage sees with equal vision mm. That's a realization that comes through the practice of various austerities and penances and study of the scriptures. Okay, okay, I'm getting a yeah, bit I mean, you can't put all the jnanis, all the yogis, all the tapasis in the same category. There's varieties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the karmis can either again come back, uh, taking birth, or they can move to the higher planetary, heavenly planets. Is that right? Is that correct? Pious karmis can. Okay. They can move to higher planets, but not the impious ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's also karma yogis too. There's karma yogis, jnana yogis, bhakti yogis, and then there's karmis. Karmis are just the gross materialists. And karma yogis, they can elevate themselves to higher planetary systems and also they can also get a, uh, a sense of detachment. And that's mentioned also in the Bhagavad Gita. Karma yoga is mentioned there. Jnana yoga is mentioned there. Krishna spends enough time with these two categories in different verses. Yagnartha Kamano Yagto, Loko Yam Kama Bandanaha, Tarartha Kama Kontaya Mukta Sunda Sumachara. That's uh, 3 9 in the Bhagavad Gita, that's one verse. Engaging in activities and offering the results of the activities as a service to the Supreme Lord. That's Karma Yoga. Mm -hmm. But that, bhakti you know, yoga is the highest of all. Huh? But bhakti yoga is the highest of all. Yeah, bhakti mama vijananti. Yeah. Out of all the yogis, Krishna says, yogi nama pisarve sam, madgatena natmanahan, stradaval bhajate yomam te me yoktatamamutaha. Out of all yogis, the bhakti yogi 
he abides with me in transcendental faith. That's the last verse in the sixth chapter of Gita. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After Krishna describes all the different yogis and the different yogas, he ends with the bhakti. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, thank you for giving those references. I will certainly read them and look them up because I want to gain a clear understanding of all these things and establish that bhakti yoga is the highest. Thank you. Yeah, one, 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 one particular chapter you could read is the chapter of Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya and Lord Chaitanya. I think it's chapter six or seven in Chaitanya Chari Tumrita Madhyali Lakhya. Lord Chaitanya is instructing Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. That's yes, interesting. That's, that's more for Jnana Yoga. Okay. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. That was very helpful. It's nice to know that because people think anybody who takes up spiritual life, it's all the same. I remember I went to a, a group meeting and there was a lady there and um, she asked me, oh, uh, mm, what is your, what do you follow? I said, bhakti, bhakti yoga. She said, oh, that's nice. I'm a jnana yoga, jnana yogi. You're doing bhakti and I'm doing jnana. It's all the same. Oh. That, that was, you know, that's how they see it. Yeah. Get them out, tata, but take up a path. The old, all the paths lead to the same direction. And that Krishna says, no. And, he says, Bhakti Mamavijana, only the bhaktis can come to me. Others come to my, my energies. They don't come to me directly. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for talking about these beautiful pastimes in this wonderful month of Karthik. It's uh, really nice to hear. And you will be happy to know here at Ljana Temple, Praladan and the Maharaj every morning. Mangalarti, he's singing the uh, Damodar Ashtakam, and then we start with the Guru Ashtakam prayer every morning. Oh, it's it's done bef in the, in the, before Mangalarti every day? Yeah, and again in the evening. In the evening is for, you know, the whole congregation, everyone comes. But uh, he sings the Damodar Ashtakam first thing in the morning, and then really? we start. That's the, interesting. Yeah, and also in the evening. Yeah, yeah, the evening is, is, the, is the actual time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. How's your health? Uh, it's uh, <laughs> up and down, <laughs> but hopefully it's getting better, I think. You're getting help I'm from, yeah, you're getting I'm help so, from I'm, Yes, I'm seeing him on October 31st. And he's going to do some more intensive treatment. He said that you need a little more work like that. So it's going. If you stay with it, you'll get the results. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm trying. I'm a very impatient person. It's very difficult to stay with anything. Ayurveda, you can't be impatient with because it's long-term and it's, it's thorough and it's successful. But you have to stick with it. And that's why people don't take up Ayurveda because it's, it takes it takes a while, it takes some discipline. It's mostly eating discipline. The the restrictive diets and all these things are all are required in order to get you know get yourself up to a standard where you can develop your health again. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, please give me your blessings that I stick with the diet and stick with the teas and medications and everything because uh, this is all, you know, I'm not used to all this stuff, you know, so it's really challenging. Yeah, pray to Dhanavantari. <laughs> that pastime is going on in the mornings. <laughs> Exactly that past time. <laughs> Danvantari has just appeared from the ocean of milk. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.
Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question about, um, uh, you, you said that every soul um, has a you know, natural affection to Krishna. And when we hear uh, with the rapt attention, uh, we get that attachment to Krishna. So I wanted to ask um, Guru Maharaj that, does it has to reach to a certain stage when you, when you hear continuously for some time and then you get attachment? Um, yeah, because I've yeah. seen few... Yeah, it's yeah. perfection of the hearing process, not just hearing. Okay. You have to hear for a long time and, and, and with attention regularly. Mm -hmm. okay. When you get to the point where your hearing becomes so strong that you all you want to do is speak about what you hear, then you know you've re you reached to the level of hearing. Mm -hmm. When you when you have this strong desire to speak. You're here that that comes by that comes by way of proper hearing, developed hearing. If you're this hearing, is... you don't you don't have any inclination to speak about Krishna. That means your hearing still needs to still need to continue that the hearing process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen a few devotees who has actually who joined the movement and stayed for some time and then left the movement, and uh, and joined different other religions basically. So I, I just feel that you know how come how come uh, you know they didn't get attracted to Krishna? It's just because I think the hearing was not uh, good enough. And well, it could be for a number of reasons. Yes. Thank Prabhupada you. said, people come all to these different spiritual groups and they say, yeah, you follow this mantra, you chant this, you, uh, you, you give me some dakshin and uh, you worship me and you can do any damn thing you want. It doesn't matter. You can eat whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Prabhupada said, that is not our movement. <laughs> We say, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you must do this. <laughs> she said, that's why we only have a few followers. <laughs> that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there is to be discipline in the life. Otherwise, yeah, any, any religion you go, you will not be able to follow it or apply it in the life properly. Yeah. You know, there were these spirit, these these uh, Eastern religions are very permissive. They just allow because they're not really bona fide. But these yogis are just looking for some some followers, some remuneration. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was a, there was a whole group of yogis that came to see Srila Prabhupada. And they came to congratulate Prabhupada. And they, one of them spoke on behalf of the group and they said, Swamiji, we want to congratulate. We, we never thought you could make these Westerners into, into bhakti yogis. And Prabhupada's first thing he said, if you know what is right, why are you cheating people? That was his, that was his response. Because they were they were just making things you know watered down so they could have some followers, some some prestige, some name. And it's just like that one yogi, he was, you know, you it was and then all the members were having sex with each other. <laughs> and that was considered uh, part of the sadhana. <laughs> So people think, wow, that's pretty good sadhana. I want to join that group. So, yeah, he had many followers, but then the whole thing collapsed after a while. Mm. And then it became a fiasco. I don't want to describe all the details of what happened because it's not so nice. But uh, Yeah. So he was popular. And he was completely, I mean, uh, that was during the 70s. I was out on Sankirtan and I would meet people who were his who was followers. 
Oh. So Guru Maharaj, they were miserable. So Guru Maharaj, do you think when if someone uh, like in our context, if someone has left the movement and you know decided to join some other group or something, do you think we should you know uh, try to convince them to come back, or uh, sh should we leave them to their decision and uh, not bother them? That depends on the person. Okay. You know, in the situation. Yeah, if you can save them from going, that would be a nice service. But you have to be able to see why are they leaving. Mm -hmm. Nobody leaves for a better philosophy. <laughs> Generally, people leave because they don't feel like they're treated properly. Or they're not getting the treatment they expect. Uh, but nobody leaves because they come up with a better philosophy. And it's just, it's just, this is just not heard of, you know. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, this is helpful. Hmm. Thank you. Can I ask one more question, Guru Maharaj? Uh, is there anybody else out there with questions? Hare Krishna, dear Guru Dev. Um, please accept humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. I have one question. If can I ask? Um, I I'm offering uh, candles, um, uh, ghee candles um, every day twice, and I was thinking if I would offer like more than twice, it would be more spiritually bene beneficial or not? You're offering one candle every day and you want to offer more than one? No, I'm offering um, twice a day. Uh, mm -hmm. And if I, I thought if I would offer more, it, is, is it would be more spiritually benefiting or not? Well, the benefit comes with the devotion, not so much the the offering is just a way to show devotion. So if you're calculating by, well, if I do 10 offerings, I get more benefit. That's material. But if you're thinking, if you want to, if you have, if you're inspired by the devotional mood of wanting to offer the candle, because the candle represents the devotion in the heart of the devotee. The light is simply a, a symbol of one's love for Krishna. So when if you're if you're in that mood and you're offering, then that's yeah, then that's good. Do more. But if you're thinking, well, you know, I did six candles today, I'll do ten tomorrow and I'll get more mercy. <laughs> then that's 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 my <laughs> bhakti doesn't work according to material calculations. Thank you very much, Gurudev, for your answer. Yeah, but if you feel inspired to offer more candles, do it with, do it with love. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Adi, adi. <laughs> adi, adi. Devotees, is there any other questions? Okay, Satya Bama, if you have another question. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I just wanted to ask about Satyavrata Muni, who has written the uh, Damodar Ashtakam. So, you know, who was he? What was his, um, you know, history? Because it's just always nice to hear from you that, uh, you know, uh, great saint who has written uh, such beautiful, uh, you know, prayer, which we sing every day. There's not much written about him. All we know is that he lived in Vrindavan for some time. There's okay. hardly anything available in the Shastras about him. He seems to be a very, uh, what is it? A very uh, obscure person. It's kind of like rare. You don't see, you don't hear much about him. You don't, 
And you don't know when you know anything else he's done. Has he done anything else? We don't know. There's no record of him doing anything else. I did read something about him once many years ago, but then um, I can't remember what it was, but he's quite obscure in relationship to the rest of the, the saints and sages. Okay, good, man. It's fine. Thank you. But what he did was amazing. It's really deep. Yes, very beautiful prayers. Every time it touches our heart, we sing. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nothing from me, Guru Maharaj. Um, devotees, if there are any other questions, please ask. Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. So Hare Krishna. Okay. Guru Maharaj, um, if there are no more questions, I just want to announce the upcoming classes. Um, right. Yeah, thank you, Guru Maharaj. So, um, dear devotees, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All the to Shri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Um, so, from tomorrow, um, there is a three part series coming up from uh, organizing by School of Bhakti. Um, the topic is Demons of uh, Vrindavana. Guru Maharaj is going to give these classes uh, for next three Saturdays. October 30th, November 6th, and November 13th. Uh, so it will be, the time is the same as 4 p.m. UK time. But actually, one more announcement I want to give you. Um, yeah, before that, uh, you have to register for this course uh, to get the Zoom link. I already shared in the conference email, and um, I shared just now in the WhatsApp groups too. So please register. There is a registration link, and you have to register with your email address, and you'll get the Zoom link. So that is for the tomorrow's class. And uh, from Sunday onwards, October 31st, the UK is having daylight savings time change, Guru Maharaj. So uh, it will be until November 6th. And again, November 7th, the uh, USA is also having the change of daylight savings. So oh, different days. So now uh, 11 o'clock Eastern time, the daily class, uh, where Guru Maharaj is right now in Eastern time. So it will be 3 p.m. UK time for the UK devotees, 3 p.m. And it'll be the same for me? Yes, Guru Maharaj. For you, it's same, 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, for the UK devotees it, and Europe devotees, I don't know about Europe, but I, I hope uh, they are also changing. Um, um, I don't think so. Okay, Guru Maharaj. But you can check on that. Yes, Guru Maharaj. So and then UK we'll... devotees, uh, from Sunday onwards, it will be 3 p.m. UK time until November 6th. From November 7th, again, US will change time, so it will become equal then. So again, the same 4 p.m. UK time and 11 o'clock Eastern time. So for me, it's it stays the same. Yeah, it's, yeah it's good. Okay, good. Good, good. Yeah, I'll mention wow. this change again in the WhatsApp group uh, for the devotees. Thank you so much. Okay, good. Um, is your husband there? Um, he is in a meeting, Guru Maharaj. I'll ask him to call you. Um, I wanted to respond to his email. And um, so I just thought if he was there, I could just mention. But uh, have, him, uh, well, have him call me on my uh, WhatsApp. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sure. Okay, when he's done. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Bama. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Some of the Vedanta ki jai. Guru Maharaj ki jai.